Welcome to today's show, you guys. I'm your host, Joseph Bonner. Thank you so much for being on today's program. Today, we're going to be talking about a court case out of Russia that once again lends itself to legal action by the United Nations and international community as Russia has once again defied um, human rights articles as well as defied probings and pushings and proddings by the United States and Great Britain to eliminate and to cease religious persecution and bias in their region towards religious minority groups, including Jehovah's Witnesses. They have ignored those probings, those warnings. And this article, again, is, is not only set to address the situation on hand, as indicated by today's show title, but also to kind of address the situation as a whole. Once this report is complete, we will be sending this report internationally around the world to ensure that the proper legal hands receive this report and we are encouraging them to take immediate action to eliminate the persecution of Jehovah's Witnesses under um, the Russian Federation. And so let's go ahead and jump right into the case. Now, a Russian court convicts Jehovah's Witness to three years in prison for his faith. So Russia has been engaged in religious persecution against Jehovah's Witnesses for some time now. And we can even date it back to the time of the Soviet Union. But more recently, since around 2007, the government has intensified its efforts to to really create a, a, a one country faith, you know, the Russian Orthodox Church. And so um, any religion that's not the Russian Orthodox Church has faced persecution. Jehovah's Witnesses have faced a brunt end of that persecution, um, many of them being sent to, to Russian concentration camps, um, being thrown into prison, all simply for, you know, practicing their faith and reading the Bible. And we're going to just jump right into this particular case. It's a very, it's very appalling because the persecution is not only targeted just Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, men, women, children, elderly, they don't care, have been subjected to beatings and interrogations and to torture. It's absolutely sick and disheartening that this is the world that we live in in 2022, and yet the Russian Federation claims to be a democracy when clearly is practicing the exact same regimen as Hitler did when he was you know, exercising his authority and power. And I, before we um, jump into the into this particular case, I do guys want you to bear in mind that Hitler got his power from the Vatican, period. He was able to rise in power and prominence because the Vatican Church, or quote-unquote what you guys term, and you know who I'm talking about if I say you guys, you guys call the Holy See, they endorsed him and supported him. And that's how he rose to so much power. Once he gained that power and influence, he used that to eliminate the Catholic competition, which means any religious organization that was not Catholic, period. So hence, he attacked the Jews. Hence, he attacked Jehovah's Witnesses. Hence, he attacked Muslims. He went after everybody who were not part of the Roman Catholic Church. And he got his backing and support from the Roman Catholic Church. Hitler did. And to this day, the Roman Catholic Church has not paid for those crimes. And now today, 2022, we see history repeats itself. The Russian Federation is doing the exact same thing Hitler did. Exact same thing. And who are they getting their power and authority from? Who's pulling the strings behind the Russian Federation? It's not Putin. No, Putin is a puppet. And I'll say that again. Putin is a puppet. He is be, the strings are being pushed and pulled by the Russian Orthodox Church. They're the real leaders of the Russian Federation, not Vladimir Putin. He's not the leader. No. They're influencing him, and whatever they say to do, he does. And through the hit their power, his influence has grown as well. And this is why you continue to see all religious groups who are not Russian Orthodox Christians under the Russian Federation being persecuted, including Jehovah's Witnesses. So again, just like the, the Holy See, the Vatican was pushing the, you know, using Hitler to, 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 to kind of carry out their agenda, um, the, the Russian Catholic, the, sorry, the, the Russian Orthodox Church is doing the exact same thing. And, 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 and isn't it true? And, and before we jump into the story, and I know I'm kind of digressing because I'm just, I feel so passionate about this, you guys. And, and, and I do my research. I do my study. You guys know I do my footwork. So I'm not stupid. I've, I've looked in the history books. I know what's up. 
Okay, so I say all that to lead this discussion with this simple fact. Isn't it true that, you know, usually when we hear situations like, oh, you know, the police have caught, you know, a string of oh, human traffickers, you know, they got about 50 people and they were able to release like 20 kids, right? And that's good. I, I love to hear news like that. But the reality is, is these people that are getting caught are, are puppets. They're not the masterminds behind the, the, the organization. They're not the masterminds behind it. Because if they were, it would stop. But it doesn't. It continues to get worse, indicating that the police are only getting the puppets behind, behind the scenes. They're not getting the masterminds. So when Hitler was killed, like, duh, he was just a puppet anyways. Who was the mastermind? It was the Holy See. It was a Roman Catholic Church. But they're, you know, they're smart. They know how to play politics. So they were able to easily, you know, separate themselves from him when when, <laughs> when things started to get too rough. Oh, okay, he's not winning. Okay, now the world's coming at her. Let's let's throw him under the bus and we get away, you know, scot free. And, and and such has been the case. They haven't had to pay for their crimes um, against Jewish people. They haven't had to pay for their crimes against humanity because their puppet paid the crimes. And so we see the same thing happening with um, the Russian Orthodox Church. Um, Putin is a puppet. And when the world turns on him, just like they turned on Hitler, the Russian Orthodox Church will be like, oh, we didn't know. We weren't a part of that. It's the same game, you guys. It's all in the history books. Putin is a puppet. Now, I say all that before I jump into this because you guys know I don't play when it comes to human rights issues. I cover, I've been covering human rights issues for several years now. And you guys know I'm at, like I said, 2022, this is not the year I'm playing with nobody. I'm calling it out. Come get me if you think you're crazy enough to. Anyways, so now let's get back into the case. Whew, y'all see, I got me. Ooh, y'all got me. I'm living. Take a little sip of my coffee and let's get into this case, you guys. Okay, now on January 19th, 2022, okay, Sidvirsky's, city of Tomsk region in Russia, convicted Alexei Yirshov to three years in prison to begin immediately for practicing his faith as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, we're going to break down a timeline of events. So he's been recently sentenced to three years in prison for practicing his faith as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. But again, you guys, um, he's just one individual. There's, there's hundreds of Jehovah's Witnesses currently facing legal prosecution and, and possible prison um, because of Russia's refusal to accept international human rights articles and their re absolute refusal and defiance to abide by international laws that they themselves signed up to abide by. Absolutely ridiculous. So let me just break down the timeline um, of Alexei so that you guys can, you know, just kind of get a good grasp of his of his of his situation anyways. On July 14, 2020, the FSB, Russian Secret Police, which is what it is, the FSB, this is how you know Putin knows what's going on. Um, so they actually did an investigation committee, and they sent some agents to invade Alexei's home for seven hours. Now, when they were doing that, officers were confiscated bank cards, electronic devices, his Bible, his passport, as well as Wi-Fi routers. Now, obviously taking such action as taking his passport, these actions prevented him from seeking refugee asylum in places like the United States and Great Britain, who have taken hundreds of refugees from Russia who were fleeing religious oppression since 2015. Now, on March 30, 2021, Yershov was formally charged based on video recordings made by a person who pretended to be interested in studying the Bible. And this individual used those recordings to hand over to the FSB, or the Russian secret police. Now, practicing their faith as one of Jehovah's Witnesses is illegal in Russia since the Bible student group was officially banned in the country in 2017. Now, again, this is following the same steps of Hitler and the Soviet Union. They also banned Jehovah's Witnesses. They threw them in concentration camps, and then eventually they were no more. Um, so a similar thing, Russia, Vladimir Putin, he's following the same steps as his predecessors, following the same steps as Hitler, same steps as the Soviet Union, persecuting the religious minority until everybody gets, gets crazy and comes after him, and then he'll be gone too. Now, on June 22, 2021, again, Yershov's criminal case was submitted to the Sidoritsky City Court of Tomsk region until his recent sentencing of three years in prison. Now, you may think, oh, three years in prison, not that big of a deal. But it is a big deal because, again, Russia continues to violate international laws that they themselves signed up to abide by 
in violation of human rights articles, treaties that they've signed. It's absolutely appalling that they have not yet been held accountable for their actions. And I get the fact. I understand that people play politics. You try to play nice and you say, okay, well, let's try to give you a nice probing and encouragement. But at the cost of human rights, it's absolutely sickening to think that this is the world that we're living in in 2022, where people have political alliances and alliances with individuals and entities that continue to violate human rights and and the rights of their citizens illegally. And yet no one says anything really. And the United Nations ought to be ashamed of themselves. And yes, I said what I said, that the fact that Russia is still part of the United Nations, how is an organization that ignores its articles and its treaties that it signs through the UN still a part of the organization? And the UN says nothing. Appalling, despicable, disgraceful. They ought to be ashamed of themselves as well. And I say complicit. Because if you ain't saying nothing and you're not doing nothing and you're not standing against it, then you're complicit. You're just as guilty. (sighs) Let me take a little cup of my sip of my coffee. I should probably be drinking some tea right now, you guys, because you know when I do these cases, I get so upset. Hold on. I'm telling (sighs) y'all. Let me calm down a little bit. Now, I want you guys to get to know um, this situation in detail. So if you think I'm lying, if you think I'm joking, just do your own research. Just do a little bit of digging in in Russia and their human rights violations, their religious persecution violations. If you think I'm the only one speaking on this, you're mistaken. This has been covered in international media outlets for several years. I'm the only one that's putting the dots together and saying, guess what? It's just like Hitler, just like the Soviet Union. They're doing the exact same thing. Putin's being a puppet for the for the Russian Orthodox Church. And I'm not the only one saying that, though. Actually, I've seen some other media outlets jump into that. I want to see the New York Times, but don't quote me on that. It was one of those major media outlets that also confirmed what I've been saying for the past several years. So shout out to them, whoever you are, because you know who you are. The point is, you guys, is that human rights violations will continue to happen uninterrupted unless people are brave enough to say something and to do something. You guys already know I'm not the one. This is not the year, and I'm not letting anybody. When I say anybody, I I mean this with great passion and seriousness. I will let no one, no one get away with human rights violations if these cases are brought to my attention, period. I'm not the one. We will come for you legally as need be. And so those of you guys who know, and I say those of you guys, those of you entities who know what I'm talking about and know the facts behind this situation, I want you to take this full report. I want you to go over and do your due diligence and do some research. And then I want you to use the power and authority that has been invested into you and make something happen. Don't just talk about it, be about it. Too much talking. That's what the United Nations says. They talk, talk, talk. Oh my goodness, they talk so much. Stop talking and do something. Hey, I want to talk. Let's have a meeting about this and a meeting about that and a meeting, meeting, meeting. What you meeting about? Dang, do something. Shoot, all these dumb meetings. And you ain't even meeting them. You ain't even saying nothing. Ooh, okay. See you guys. Why y'all got me doing these uh, court cases this late at night? Oh, man. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just tired of it. And I'm, I'm so sick of just people's defiance to, to law and order and, and and laws that they themselves have set up and, and promised to abide. It'd be different if they were like, okay, well, we don't, we didn't sign this treaty or we, we just, we're not a democracy or we're, the, you know, it'd be different if they would just be honest and be like, okay, well, no, we're just not going to do that. We never said we would. Then I probably would say less. I would still say something, but I would say less. But the fact that you're being fake and fronting like you're holier than thou and yet hiding behind religious bigotry and racism and and false ideologies and a pretense that you're obeying the law. It, it irritates me to know, and I can't stand fake people. I can't stand fake organizations. And I don't care who you are. If you're fake, I can't stand you. I don't like you if you're fake. And if you come over here with some fakeness to me and my profile and on my comments and I read it and discover it, I'm coming for you legally, period. Let this be awarded. 
to anybody who thinks you're going to come at me or come at anybody that I love or care about or anything that I love and care about, especially human rights, and get away with it. You've lost your mind because I'm not the one. This isn't the year. Test me on it if you want to. All right, you guys. Now, typically when I do these reports, I do try to keep a little professional. I do try to um, keep my emotions in check. But sometimes I'm like, you know what? It's hard. Okay. Anyways, for the full report, you guys, you guys can check out courtmagazine.org. You'll also be able to find this full report in Legend Magazine as well, as well as Women's Wellbeing Magazine and a multiple other scores of magazines that this article will be published in. If you're listening to this podcast, thank you so much for joining today's show. Please continue to um, follow um, me again, Joseph Bonner at Mr. Joseph Bonner on Instagram, official Joseph Bonner on Facebook, Twitter, I think it's Mr. Joseph Bonner, and then LinkedIn, Joseph Bonner. So you guys know who I am. And if you don't, you better ask somebody, okay? Um, That being the case, you guys, um, much love, much success to you. Continue to fight for human rights by taking a stand in your own special way. And that is by obey, obeying the laws of the land as they are stipulated and, and, and doing the right thing. Is that too much to ask of humanity right now? Is it too much? I don't think it is. Until next time, you guys, I'm your host, Joseph Bonner, saying... Stay safe.